What's going on guys? Today I want to talk about is Pegasi better than Axie Infinity? Now a lot of you guys might have seen recently that Pegasi's coin has been absolutely skyrocketing. Um, they got multiple coins in their ecosystem but it has been going through the moon and a lot of scholars there are making tons of money. So I've actually had a chance to go through the white paper, read a bit on it and I'm going to go over three reasons why I think Pegasi has been in a good position and Hey, some people say they might be better than Axie and also two maybe concerns I have going through it, right? So the first reason why, you know, a lot of people are saying Pegasi is better than Axie is Pegasi is able to predict its player growth. Now, if you think about Axie Infinity and you think about their actual um, economy, one thing you'll notice, and let me put this up for you here is this is their SLP chart. If we go and we look back, we'll see this massive spike up for SLP to around like 28, 40 cents <laughs> to the USD dollar, which is insanity. And what really created that is an influx of player growth around May. Around May time, the Ronin train really came up and allowed people to not play gas fees, ETH gas fees, every time they're like buying axes. So a lot of people who were on the sidelines saw this as an opportunity to really get in and afford some axes. And as soon as this happened and an influx of players started coming and people really started breeding scholars at this point, um, that put so much pressure on Axie Infinity's coin value, right? And that's because they didn't have the infrastructure. They didn't have the support teams. They didn't have the, the, the network teams. They never anticipated how much players would increase in this amount of time. So because Pegasus is able to see this, you know, the second mover advantage is that they can really make it so, hey guys, let's temper our growth and make sure it's growing at a pace that we can grow at, right? So even the way they built their support staff out, the way they built their scholarships out, the way they built everything in the game is built keeping in the fact that they can control their player growth where Axie is really dependent on market factors to control their player, um, player growth. Number two is that Pegasi really um, built with scholarship programs in mind. Um, I think if you've never seen Pegasi, maybe I'll pull up their, their website. But they literally have their own rental system, guys. It's absolutely insane. So as someone who's, you know, like myself, as I pull this out, look, look at this. These are the metal horses. These are the Pegasi that you buy. So you can literally buy an NFT in Pegasi. And without setting up a scholarship program, you can rent it out to scholars automatically. So what I do for Axie Infinity right now is I have to set up accounts. I have to, when a new scholar comes on, I have to send them to his wallet or their wallet. I then have to give them the username, the password, I gotta set up the Gmails. There's a lot of administration um, <laughs> factors when it comes to uh, Pegasi that I have to do. Sorry, when it comes to Axie that I have to do. And Pegasi doesn't have to do anything. And this is their website pretty clean. Like you have their roadmap, very easy to see right on their actual website, which is really cool. Um, and right now with them thinking about scholarships and you know, scholarships have heavily impacted the economy as most game players and actually are scholars now with them being able to see, okay, scholars, maybe they put so much sell pressure, they make the coin go down. Now they're implementing a thing where it's like, if you're someone who is actually renting out your Pegasi, you will receive 70% of that as the owner of that Pegasi and scholars are only earning up to like 30% if they do it on the website. Um, where in Axie, you are an absolute villain. If you don't pay scholars properly in Axie, properly, you are an absolute villain. Like I feel bad for a lot of the, you know, uh, smaller scholars who, you know, maybe can't afford the 50%, 60% or 40% and geez louise they get squashed little softy says pegasi cutie uh three inches says should the f should the flight crew try pegasi little softly says yes i heard that you can rent uh herman says renting with share profit is really difficult yes hermelin definitely um expand on that anyone that knows any pegasi things i definitely want to hear them um so yeah one of the 
big things there is that in Pegasi, they're putting a thing where they're like, all right, guys, owners, you're going to get 70%. Scholars, you're going to get 30%. <laughs> and they're really trying to change that narrative, which again, if it's something that helps tokenomics, good on them, but they're trying it out and seeing if that's going to help it. And they're really trying to shift the narrative there. So that's one of the things, building it with the scholarship in mind, really helping out their economy. And at number three is they're building Pegasi with an economy first mindset. So one of the things I want to show you guys, which is, I think is pretty insane. Um, let's see here. So this is Pegasi's mint versus burned ratio right on their stats here. And what you can see here is their minting and their burning is basically one to one every month, which is as an ASCII player, this is absolute insanity to me. Like I'm looking at this, I speak English, this looks like French. I don't even understand how they're able to achieve such a one-to-one -one ratio. And realistically, and just to give you um, some context, this is how it looks in Axie Infinity. Axie is minting way more than they're burning. And again, this is why Pegasi has the second mover advantage here. What they're doing is they actually making the game directly thinking about burn mechanisms and releasing them like they have a burn mechanism where if you just want to change the name of your pegasi you got to burn <laughs> some of the coin right so this actually incentivizes more burning beyond just breeding and it helps actually keep that pressure on the coin so really interesting stuff there um so now that I said all of the things that I think is really, really great with Pegasi, let me t say my biggest concerns that I have with a game like Pegasi, right? So Pegasi just started in October 2021, right? So it just came out and people are making tons of cash. Like um, literally, like you can probably earn, like it costs a thousand dollars to buy your first Pegasi if you buy like one of the most common ones. Um, and you can probably earn like, 300 600 dollars in a month just playing yourself or if you're renting out your axie you know you have a couple axes you can easily earn over a thousand dollars a month and one of the things to me that you know is very reminiscent is if you were someone who you know will go to slp chart i joined the game probably around here in august right so in august it was around 20 cents to usd for SLP, right? So if you're joining a 20 cents USD, you're earning a ton of money playing Axie. Like just by yourself, you could earn like $600 a month playing Axie, which is absolutely unreal. And realistically, this drop in price, I thought Axie's, you know, SLP could drop, but I didn't necessarily know it could drop that fast, that rapid, especially with no real economic impacts. So one of the first things that really catches my eye on a game like Pegasi is like they haven't had to actually go through any economic downturns. And we want, I definitely want to see how they're able to, you know, adjust to an economic downturn. So right now, if you know, know the market, we go to ETH to USD, look at how much ETH has been down. Well, look at this. In one week, ETH dropped 25%. In one month, ETH dropped 37%. So this is the first time a lot of these NFT games are being punched in the mouth. And because of that, now we're going to be able to see what they're really made of. How do they react if their coin starts dropping and their community starts getting worried? I want to see that because right now Pegasi looks very reactive to their audience. So that is something I want to see. Second thing is, if we go back to Pegasi's um, game, their roadmap, uh, one thing you'll realize is Pegasi, yes, you can race your Peggies, but right now it's unskilled gameplay, right? So you're in a game where you just pick your horse, it races around the stadium, and randomly one of the horses win. Because it's unskilled gameplay, guys, there, there actually is no <laughs> released game yet. And in their minds, they want to release basically the next Mario Kart, right? That's their, their game. They want to be able to release the next Mario Kart. Now, whether it becomes the next Mario Kart, that's really very undetermined, that's very speculative. And realistically, that's how you, and they want to do this by Q3, release their first mobile game. Releasing the next Mario Kart on mobile is how you really appeal to the masses. And that's what will really decide if Pegasus is going to be a game. 
Because right now, all, and this is probably my third, you know, biggest problem with Pegasus. Right now, their main people that they're actually expanding their game for is just Axie Infinity Space. I'm not sure this game at this point will eventually expand and be, you know, something that casuals want to play. And the reason why I say that is, think about it. When's the last time you played a racing game on mobile? When's the last time you played a horse racing game on mobile, right? Mobile games aren't necessarily dominated by racers. They're dominated by the Clash of Clans. They're dominated by even the Mario Scrollers or the Candy Crushers. I haven't seen a racing game on mobile yet. So again, this is something that in theory sounds good, but in practice, it's gonna take a talented team to really make it like, hey, this is the this is the go-to mobile racing game that everyone wants to play, right? So Axie Infinity right now, absolutely in the gutter. But what gives me hope about Axie Infinity long-term is the fact that they never thought about the economy. They didn't know how reactive they should be to their economy. And now that they see that, all right, we have to be reactive. Now they're releasing burn mechanisms such as the Axie releasing sync. And this year they delayed land gameplay because now they're revamping their whole engine. Too much players joined last year. So they have to revamp the whole thing. Now they have enough money to go straight to 3D instead of releasing a 2D product. Um, now Axie's like, we need to actually balance our economy and introduce burn mechanism after burn mechanism after burn mechanism. Uh, Three Inches says, also the devs are always responsive. Three Inches says, I think they got good burning mechanisms. Herman says, remember I chat with you last December if you offer Pegasus scholarships. It is diff it is because it's really difficult to rent. Interesting. Sooner says, you looking at Pegasus? I am looking at it as an investment. Um, so what I would say is this, right? I think as a scholar, like if you're a scholarship, when it comes to these other NFT games, I would say 100%, you know, especially if you're in my scholarship, other scholarships, it might be a bit different, but if you're in my scholarship, 100%, I would encourage you to, you know, try to get a second scholarship in other, in other communities. I'm completely open to anyone playing two scholarships at the same time. Um, and I think as a scholar, you can move a bit faster than managers because managers, we have to go there, read the right paper, invest. Um, you guys just have to really get a scholarship and then you can earn earnings right away, right? Um, as a manager though, like managers have to really be forward thinking. They have to really like think about the game a year from now, two years from now, and two years from now. So Axie Infinity's game plan is they would release their builders package. They're also, you know, trying to release multiple games within the Axie and Infinity universe, multiple ways to use their axes actually. So because of that, there, in my mind, there's less risk going on in the long term because as these games release, we already have one viable game that people want to play. As more games release, there'll be more ways to burn your SLP and long term, they can attract more normals to the game. With Pegasi, I don't know how successful their game's going to be. And if their one value add is the economy, which I think they're doing an amazing job, like you got your burning mechanisms right out the gate, then their target audience is always going to be Axie Infinity's player base. And if Axie Infinity, like let's say it's 2023, comes out with a burning mechanism and SLP ever passes the value of a Pegasus coin, then <laughs> I don't know how many people are gonna switch from Axie Infinity over to Pegasi if Axie Infinity ever becomes more valuable than their coin, right? And that's an, that's a big if, but with something like land gameplay with multiple items, that could be something that we could see in the future. So for me, it's at least minimum June until I actually look at this game to actually invest money in it. Um, but let me know your thoughts, guys. That's just what I think. Those are a couple of reasons why Pegasi might be better than Axie and a couple of reasons why Axie might be better than um, Pegasi. But let me know what you think. Um, are you a scholar? Are you looking at Pegasi? Are you a manager? Are you looking to invest in it? And do you think Axie Infinity will compete with Pegasi in the long term? It's been your boy, Fly Stewie. If you like videos like this and you want more economic breakdowns where I go over my thoughts, let me know in the comments below. But we're going to keep rocking out on Twitch. We will see you next time.